I am the artist who works through the night. I am the unexpected video in your subscription feed. And today, we're paying tribute to Darkwing Duck. Time to break out those purples, because this one's been a long time coming, my friends. Darkwing Duck was, is, and always will be one of my favorite shows of all time. Here's what you gotta know. It was part of the Disney Afternoon lineup of TV shows in the early 90s, along with Tailspin, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, and their flagship series, DuckTales. Blue. Most of these shows were taking Disney characters that had been around for decades and putting them in updated settings for new adventures. Uncle Scrooge and his family would go globetrotting on treasure hunts. That was pretty in line with the original comics. Chip and Dale starting a detective agency and dressing like Indiana Jones and Magnum P.I. for some reason. Okay, a little out there, but logical enough. And then, perhaps my favorite change, because it's just so bizarre. Let's take the animals from 1967's The Jungle Book and make them bush pilots in the 1930s. What? I mean, I love Tailspin. I watched it, but that's a weird choice, right? Okay. Now, when it comes to Darkwing Duck, his villains, and the world of St. Canard, it was all brand new creations. I always have a special place for Darkwing because, uh, you know, I've been Winnie the Pooh and Tigger and Taz. You know, Darkwing Duck came along and he was my own creation. He was my first guy whose voice and character came right out of me. It also had a darker tone compared to the other Disney shows with a heavy focus on action. Sure, the other shows had a lot of exciting rescues and daring escapes, but they were usually trying to stay out of trouble, and actual fight scenes were pretty rare. Not like Darkwing, who would seek out confrontation. Him taking a beating was a staple of the show. I get Wile E. Coyote vibes. So the original concept of the show was called Double O Duck, and was more of a super spy premise. Turns out the phrase Double O fell under the James Bond copyright, of course. So they ended up going with more of a superhero motif borrowing imagery from The Shadow, Lone Ranger, and Batman. And you can really sense the homage to pulpy Golden Age heroes with Darkwing's dashing costume and dramatic entrances. Today I'm paying tribute to five of Darkwing's greatest enemies, but first, the hero himself. Let's get started. Or should I say... Let's get dangerous. Drake Mallard lives in a perfectly normal, unassuming suburban neighborhood caring for his adopted daughter, Gosselin. But when trouble arises, he becomes Darkwing Duck. Oh, that's two words, not three. Both these capitalized. Here's my photo. If the papers need more glossies, my number's on the card. <laughs> the thing that really sets Darkwing apart from most other superheroes is that he's a glory hog that craves fame and attention. So where's the press? I thought this was the age of media glut! And what I love most about him is that, while he's very clever, I wouldn't say he's a genius. He doesn't have any superpowers, and he's not particularly strong or even tall. He's just incredibly confident, with unwavering determination, even though he often gets in his own way, by caring more about his career and reputation as a hero than actually saving the day. Still, he does try valiantly to balance his crime-fighting lifestyle with being a good father. Can't. I'm helping Gaz with her homework. He's brave and daring, but stubborn and full of himself. I think this makes him a really interesting character study, and I appreciate how many episodes focus on these aspects of Darkwing's personality. Some hint at his authoritarian tendencies, Others focus on his imposter syndrome. Then there's his paternal relationships, or learning to be part of a team. But no matter what, Darkwing's always there for those he cares about, especially himself. So you probably noticed that this style is a lot like my Simpson portraits. We keep the black outline, and then you have a base color, a lighter one for the highlight, and a darker one for the shadow effect. It's also 8 by 10 inches. Not too big, but not that small. Now I didn't want Darkwing to be a big blob of purple, so I actually used Plum for his outfit with eggplant as a shading effect, and then the actual purple is his cape. But there are plenty of options you could use. Maybe something like purple and grape as a shadow effect. Or midnight blue if you want to go a bit darker. One thing I want to point out is that I used cheddar for his beak. And that means I used butterscotch and orange as the shadow effect, with just a little sliver of yellow for the top highlight. Anyway, here's the full color list. Of all the great villains Darkwing has, one could argue that the true nemesis of the show is Drake's ego. Numbers don't scare me. Once I catch up to those confounded criminals, their conniving conspiracy will be kaput. Next, we have Elmo Sputterspark, a.k.a. Megavolt. <sighs> I love the smell of voltage in the evening. Maybe the most well-known Darkwing villain, because, and I haven't done an official count, I'm pretty sure he has more episodes than any other bad guy. True to his name, Megavolt can manipulate electricity and even control machines. He's also completely insane. 
What? And you're normal? Must you always introduce yourself? And believes that all electronic appliances have been enslaved and seeks to liberate them. But in a world of talking animals, who's to say what's crazy? I've always loved his character design in that bright yellow suit with that giant battery strapped to his back. Animators would have fun with the electric currents passing through his plug-in like helmet like a Tesla coil. I'm having a lot of fun myself here by giving Megavolt some healthy sparks flying from his fingertips so we can have a bright and immediate light source, giving us some stark contrast with that shadow effect. I love the opportunity to add eye-catching elements like that. They call me crazy. They call me insane. Why were they right? Quacker Jack is a former toy maker who went out of business, blaming it on the rising popularity of video games. So he began a life of crime, as you do robbing banks to fund his passion of creating toys often with a deadly twist, like his robotic chattering teeth or exploding panda doll. He's a really fun foil for someone like Darkwing who takes himself so seriously. All right, Quacker Jack, playtime's over. Well, <laughs> if it isn't Darkwing Dud, I grow weary of this game. <laughs> but his wacky attitude is really disturbing when juxtaposed with how dangerous his toys and traps are. His big floppy jester's hat would always swing about wildly, a perfect visual clue to his manic personality, which is what I really wanted to capture in this portrait here. Oh wait, oh, wait, 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 some would say my toys are an acquired taste. Of course kids would learn to like my toys if their parents didn't make the fair. Dr. Reginald Bushroot was a renowned scientist when, in a desperate attempt to prove his theories were correct, resorted to experimenting on himself. And you know, that never goes well. He became a half-duck, half-plant hybrid, and his transformation gave him the ability to control plant life, which he used to take revenge on those who had bullied him. But I gotta say, I don't really consider Bushroot a villain like the other guys. He doesn't want to hurt people. He's not driven by greed or anger. He's really just kind of a shy pacifist who's lonely and misunderstood. Never again will I be told, I can't go out with you. You're just a shrub. I found a way to obtain the perfect bride. I'm growing my own. His story is a sad one, and many of his plots involve him just trying to make a friend, sometimes literally. I think this makes him one of the most complex characters on the show. All I ever wanted was to make the world a better place to live. Now look at me, I'm a walking salad bar. Tired of villains made of solid matter? Try the Liquidator! Okay, he's not the most fleshed out character, but he's got some funny gimmicks that I really like. His real name was Bud Flood, owner of Bud Flood Sparkling Crystal Pure Flood Water. Then, he began sabotaging his competition with dangerous chemicals. Darkwing swooped in to stop him, but Flood fell into his own contaminated concoction, transforming him into a being of pure water. And honestly, I just think he looks really cool visually, like the way he always has bubbles and waves coursing through his body. His mind seems to be stuck in constant sales pitch mode because he always speaks through advertising slogans and commercial taglines. Are your muscles sore? Tired? Aching? Try Liquidator brand! Something that sets Liquidator apart from the other portraits is that I'm not using black for his outlines, but rather midnight blue. And he gets some more detailed shading for his very watery appearance. Like toothpaste for the highlights, some light blue to give it some depth. He's mostly pastel blue. And then little white dots for the bubbles. His nose is cobalt, with some dark blue shading. Same for the eyes. I became the new and improved master of all liquids, the Liquidator. You know, his origin episode is the only one where he's the sole villain. Usually he appears as part of the Fearsome Five, along with Megavolt, Quackerjack, Bushroot, and their leader. Actually, wait, because we gotta get something out of the way. There are two Darkwing villains who have referred to themselves as Negaduck. First was when Darkwing was hit with Megavolt's Tron Splitter, dividing Darkwing into a good version and evil version of himself. Then each of those Darkwings was hit again, galvanizing them into beings of pure positivity and negativity. The negative one proclaiming his new identity as Negaduck. The second is the more well-known Negaduck who hails from the Negaverse, an alternate dimension where characters seem to be the antithesis of the versions we know. Villains are heroes, heroes are villains. So Negaduck, being that world's version of Darkwing Duck, is pure evil. A lot of people seem to think that the galvanized Negaduck is the origin of our red hat sporting supervillain, but this is not the case, as we all know that Tron Splitter episode ends with Darkwing's good and evil sides being merged back together. But I can't blame people for the confusion. I mean, that Tron Splitter episode is called Negaduck, and they used this image for the episode's release on VHS. And it's titled, Birth of Negaduck? Did these people even watch the show? <sighs>
I'm very happy to tell you that they seem to realize the bewilderment this has caused and are taking steps to correct it, most recently releasing merchandise of that galvanized negative duck under the name Negatron. I fully endorse this decision. So now that we've cleared up that absolutely necessary point, let's pay tribute to that dastardly doppelganger from that divergent dimension of deviance. <laughs> Only someone so dastardly, so despicable, so disdainful of the utterly defenseless would dare perform such a deed. Friends, I give you Negaduck. Well, since you put it that way, being the Negaverse version of Darkwing, naturally they have opposite worldviews and motivation. While Darkwing is a hero, Negaduck just loves being evil. He craves destruction, chaos. Even little bunnies aren't safe. <laughs> the science of pain Ooh, gives me chills. That said, he and Darkwing do have similar traits, and not just fashion sense. Personality-wise, they both think very highly of themselves. They seem equally matched in terms of intelligence and fighting ability although Negaduck is much more focused on his schemes than the media spotlight. One thing I find really interesting about Negaduck is that he seems to have completely abandoned any kind of civilian identity. There's no evil Drake Mallard. He is all Negaduck all the time. Bye-bye, uh, heroes. <laughs> and perhaps that demonstrates the importance of Drake's connection with Gozolin, Launchpad, even the Muddlefoots. Negaduck doesn't have these things to ground him to humanity, or whatever the duck version of humanity is which is why he's so detached from all things good and wholesome. I wish we could have learned more about Negaduck and his life in the Negaverse, how he came to rule over St. Canard and eventually create a portal between our worlds and a giant birthday cake, but I do really like that there is never any redemption for Negaduck. Occasionally Darkwing will have to team up with other villains to take down a common threat, not Negaduck. There is not the slightest hint that there is goodness anywhere in him. I'm trying to have a little fun. Is there a problem out here? Now you've probably noticed, for the most part, Negaduck's pattern is just Darkwing's pattern, but mirrored. And that's true, but there are some notable exceptions. For example, he obviously gets his chainsaw instead of Darkwing's gas gun. Darkwing's mouth is slightly open, while Negaduck is gritting his teeth showing us those fangs. And I also used butterscotch for his beak, while Darkwing gets cheddar. Get it? Slightly darker version? And you know, my friends, it's easy to see the genesis of these villains in classic comic book tropes. Electricity villains, botany-based foes, the reverse hero. But it's the clever and creative personalities that make this a phenomenal rogues gallery. And the same goes for Darkwing as well. I'm sure we can all think of other masked vigilantes who skirt the law for the greater good. But only Darkwing Duck, with his versatile gas gun and penchant for purple, constantly works on himself to set aside the need for adoration and overcome his obsession with stardom to focus on being the best father, the best friend, and the best hero he can be, often putting himself in harm's way to do it because, as we all know, Darkwing doesn't play it safe. He gets dangerous. I am the teller that flaps in the night. It's my mission to liberate all the innocent light bulbs enslaved by society. It's I don't know why I thought I could have any friends anyway. I guess I'm just a silly old mute plant. High <laughs> and dry with nowhere left to go. A liquidator brand rubber wrap may be just the thing you need to save your life. Tell you what, you help me conquer this planet and I'll let you breathe. And there we have it, my friends. Darkwing Duck versus the Fearsome Five. What a colorful batch of projects this turned out to be. Thank you so much for watching and let me talk about one of my favorite shows. As always, you can click the pieces right there to get the patterns to make your very own. Good luck. Luck! There's no such thing as luck. I did it with persistence, skill, and a good sense of dramatic timing. <laughs>